All right. So, you're going to hear a bit of an echo. I do apologize for that. But today, I am doing renovations on this ugly, old bathroom. I mean, this bathroom is one of the newly renovated bathrooms in the house. But the shower, they just skipped right so you know it looks like everything else in the bathroom is fairly new um it looks like they updated everything else in the bathroom based on the old pictures but it just seems like they just kind of said whatever with the tub so as you can see the tub has cracks in it um of course we had to re but i figured why re if we're just going to replace the bathroom tiles anyway I'm not sure if there's a plumbing issue. We won't know until we get behind the walls. Um, of course, you know, we've thought about hiring out. Um, instead of me doing it myself, I'm getting a lot of comments. <laughs> Why are you carrying all these heavy tiles and you're doing this by yourself? And yeah, and also it's my first time. So this will be something new for me and you can come along. And I'm not like the other DIY channels where they've had rental properties and they've done this before. And so this is their debut. Um, this is actually really, really my first time. If you can tell by the quality of the video, if you can tell how it's being shot. I don't really have a lot of resources. I don't really have the new and updated cameras and stuff like that. I don't make money off of YouTube. So I'm just doing this for informational purposes so people can know. Like I was looking for information about hexagonal tiles and I didn't see any videos about it um also I really didn't see like details as far as you know what if you're not a contractor already and you don't have a lot of these tools just sitting around so um and you don't know like measurements and numbers and things like that I felt like a lot of that stuff was just like huh you know and as I'm going to the store I'm learning things I've taken almost four trips to the store as a matter of fact while I'm making this video right now, I still have to take one more trip to rent a wet towel sole. And there's different sizes. Um, this is another thing. They really don't, when these contractors are talking to you, they already kind of own most of the tools required to do the job. I own nothing. I don't do this for a living. So this is, would be my very, very first time getting all this equipment for my very, very first time and doing this job for my very, very first time. Now, of course, I've had a couple things around the house um, and I'll explain to you why. I mean, honestly, some of the stuff that I already had around the house was given to me um, and my dad's a contractor. So I'm going to be completely fluid about the situation. My dad is a contractor and I I've had called him and asked him some questions and I am going to relay that information over to you guys because I don't hear a lot of this in these videos either about the things that he advised me to do and the information that he provided me with and the knowledge that he gave me. So quick story time. We moved here um, in 2019 and I really didn't know, you know, I knew it was a fixer upper but I really didn't start to see things until I moved in here. And honestly, I'm not that type of person that buys big, luxurious houses and just move in and say, hey, house to work. I'm looking at my beautiful home and all my, all my, you know, beautiful things. I'm more of like, hey, welcome to my home. This is a project. Welcome. <laughs> um, I don't know. My importance is on having a low cost of living versus, you know, having a high cost of living. Now, there are pros and cons about buying newly renovated houses right off the jump. If you're not really handy or you don't plan on being very handy, then, you know, uh, a fixer up or home is probably not for you. Um, an older home is probably not for you either, especially if you have smaller children. Always test for lead and things like that. Um, you know, it could be a little unsafe for the environment, such as asbestos and lead and things like that. Things and, you know, different techniques that they used back in the day. Um, this is a very informative video. So if you don't like talking, you don't like people talking for a long time, you just want to see people do it. Go look at the other videos. This is more of if it's your first time and you want like some in-depth information on what to do, what to get, how to do things, then this will be you. Now, if you're one of those people who owns a home, you bought an older home and you're like, okay, it's cheap, but I'm just going to do the work as time goes on. Just make sure that you estimate, get an inspector, 
estimate how much the cost is to to get the home to where you want it to be and then make a determination on whether or not it's worth your money um it's definitely worth the money to hire an inspector to look at every a good inspector to look at everything to make sure that everything is done properly and that you don't have any problems that's going to cost you a whole lot of money down the road so that's not the situation with this house for the most part this house is pretty much like diy friendly so i hired a few people since i've been living here in 2019 and i've had a few quotes i've had contractors come through and tell me um, yeah, let me get the estimates. We want to see, we want to measure everything and see how much everything costs. We want to see what you want to get done and things like that. They come over, they do the estimates, and I never hear from them again. I reach back out, poor communication. Um, I've had situations where I'll hire contractors. They'll do a good job. Um, and then, you know, there'll be some things that I didn't like, but it's not anything that's crazy. I prefer for the job to be done right, period. And that takes precedence over everything. So we had a mold problem. Um, we didn't see it until our it was in our youngest child's room. That's why I said, don't get an older home if you have babies. The mold was in there. Um, luckily, I caught it while they were away on the weekend at their grandma's house. Um, and so no, no telling how long that's been present in the room. But it was from a roof leak, from a chimney. And like whatever flasher they put around the chimney was bad. The water got through, um, so we had to reflash the chimney and re, you know, cut out the mold. And then I got someone to come in and clean out the vents, um, clean out the vents, you know. The person who came and cleaned out the vents removed all the vents, the outer vents from our walls. And when they put them back, some of them were put back some. Anyway. And so when they left, they left like the holes around the vent in one of our hallways, which is a pain because our kids dig in it. So there was that. Um, they cut out the hole. They said they were going to get somebody else to come out and replace the sheetrock. I mean, the, the drywall. No one ever got in contact with me. This is a third party. This has nothing to do with the person who actually remediate the mold. The third party that they contacted did this. They never contacted us. Then we... Got some quotes. Oh, the person who did our chimney to flash it through the trash in the back, but he did a really good job. Um, the person who um, who we were trying to get to do the windows, um, we hired them. They came out. The integrity was terrible. So when I signed up, they said, oh, yeah, you know, me and my crew were going to be out there and so on the windows, but a different, a completely different crew of people came. They came. My husband was like, there's a broken window. But they never mentioned the broken window. There's about five windows that we had to get installed. They never mentioned the broken window. So, you know, we're asking like, okay, um, they come to us and they're like, yeah, two, two windows are not measured properly. Um, and so we would have to reorder those windows and, and install those um, and come back and install those. And I'm like, what? You came here, y'all measured, and y'all left. And we waited 12 weeks to get these windows. And y'all come here and y'all say, oh, they're measured wrong. They never mentioned anything about the broken window. We kept bringing it up and they finally said, oh, yeah, the broken window, too. So the integrity was off. Um, we're assuming that they would just try to install the window knowing that it was already cracked and not tell us that, which I didn't agree with. So not only did we have a cracking window, but we had two uh, windows that were too small. So they were only left with two windows that they can actually install. I'm like, listen, just get it together. We don't want to do this right now. We don't want you guys. And then they kept harassing us after that. So I'm not really sure why they would do that. Their integrity was terrible. We had a broken window, two mismeasured windows, and we had to wait 12 weeks for more. No. So they were fired. Everybody that we got to come up here, all the other contractors that came up here to give us quotes, besides the ones who never contacted us to give us a quote after they came for the estimate and scheduled an appointment and came in here, they were giving us these high amounts. Like they were overcharging us, like ridiculous. And I do my research and I know when I'm being overcharged for something based on the quality, based on the time, based on how much I'm asking for. I do thorough research on how much I'm expecting to spend. And these amounts were way out the water. So in my, my head, I was like, oh, I might as well do it myself because it's like, why would I pay you guys this much money and I can just own the equipment that I'm using to do things on the house that I can use for other projects. 
So anyway, there's my story time with my contractors and it was a complete nightmare. So now we're here. <laughs> now we are here. All right. So for this project, don't pay any attention to these. I was carrying cement boards. Um, and so they had drywall on them. Okay. So, okay. I bought cement boards. Now, the cement board situation, I kept looking up. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Now, with the cement board situation, I kept looking up um, cement boards. And people were saying, like, Wonderlight and things like that. But when I talked to my dad, he told me get Hardy. Hardy backboard. And it confirms that because my dad is really good. He's like, he's really good with quality. He doesn't play that. Like he really goes in with quality and quality is his main priority when he's doing business because his work represents everything. So he said, get hardy backboard. Don't get wonder like, don't get any of that. You can use your own opinion with that. But <laughs> I went to floor and decor, floor and decor, floor and decor. I call it floor and decor because that's what it looks like. Um, and they also confirmed, okay, you got the Hardy. All right, good. Um, that's the best brand. It's a little more expensive, but it's definitely the best option. Hardy. Okay. Nobody's telling us what type of cement board to use. They're just saying put cement board up. I used Hardy. Okay. And supposedly that's the best type of brand for now. Um, thin set. Thin set. Do not get the pre-mixed thin set. That's what my dad said. He said, get the one that you mix. And somebody at Floor and Decker told me to do that. Oh, speaking of Floor and Decker, this video was not sponsored by Floor and Decker. My dad told me to go there because he said Floor and Decker was cheaper than Home Depot. And that is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Um, of course, there's things that you're not going to find at Floor and Decker that's at Home Depot. I will go to Floor and Decker first, get as much things as you can, compare and contrast prices, and then just prepare when you go. Don't do pickup. Don't do delivery. Put everything in your cart. Put compare and contrast, uh, you know, prices between Home Depot online and Floor and Decker online. Put everything in your cart. And then when you go, look at your cart and pick up everything that's on your cart. You'll have to do calculations on Floor and Decker. Some of the pages offer you an option to put in your square feet. Um, you measure the square feet by doing this, the length of the wall, the width of the wall, each wall. You come up with the square footage for each wall and you add them together. Or you come up with the square footage, um, you come up with the length for each, yeah, you do the square footage for each wall and then you add them together. That's how I did it. So, <laughs> and how you calculate the square feet, you ask? Length times width, period. Just do the length, do the width. Um, and you're using feet. You're converting feet to square feet. And you're doing length times width, period. Now, <laughs> that's something that I didn't know until I started doing my own stuff. Also, with the bagger boards, um, 60 inches is five feet. <laughs> 36 inches is three feet. Inches, use 60 divided by 12, you'll get the, the feet. Um, <laughs> because 60 inches divided by 12 is five and 12 inches is one foot. So just in case, because honestly, you never know what people know or don't know. So just, just to put that out there. Um, Thin set, I didn't buy the pre-mixed. I bought the unpremixed version. I'm going to mix my own thin set. And that's what I was told that would be the best option. And I was verified that when I went to Florida Decor. Um, I bought a bucket to mix the thin set. In. <laughs> you can get this bucket from Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. It's just a bucket. Um, doesn't have to be that big, but that's what I found. So that's what I picked up. Red Guard Aqua Defense. Aqua Defense, I think, is at Florin Decker, and Lowe's Red Guard is at Home Depot. Um, I think Red Guard was 47 at Home Depot. Aqua Defense was like 46 at Florin Decker. Um, I bought already pre-mixed grout because my dad said it's not important to get to mix the grout yourself. You could just get the pre-mixed grout. That should be fine. And I was confirmed that at Florin Decker. I asked questions, you know. I of course, I trust my dad, but, you know, I just want to verify. Um, I bought a notch trowel. <sighs> it's 
small notches for small towel, big notches for big towel, period. Um, I bought a float, a rubber float. Save yourself the headache, spend the money, get a universal one. Trust me, you won't regret it. Um, based on your backer boards, you'll have to get a certain type of screw. So based on my backer board, um, I have the half inch backer board. That's another thing. There's a quarter inch backer board and there's a half inch backer board. The quarter inch backer boards are for the floor. The half inch backer boards are for the wall. People are going to tell you, oh, you could use the floor. You could use the quarter inch on the walls or you can use. Don't do it. Don't listen to them. Okay. Do your research online on all the websites. It says uh, half inch wall, quarter inch floor, period. So because I'm doing the quarter inch on the wall, um, I got the one five eighths. Um, inch screws and I got a hundred I got two of these 150 packs because I don't know how many of these I'm gonna need and I bought two just to be sure because when you go to Home Depot it says um, you know 60 of them can do six six backer boards or something and honestly <laughs> when I did the calculations on Home Depot they said that I needed 14 backer boards but I had to do math <laughs> good thing I love numbers and I'm an accountant for a living but that was a headache because I really thought I needed 14 backer boards imagine carrying those into the house and I didn't look at this wall this is not 14 okay so anyway there's that and it says free t25 drill bit so of course you'll need a drill bit for these screws if you look there's like a star at the top I mean I don't know just Keep that in mind. I mean, just in case, you know, it's just things that people don't tell you. A scoring knife um, to cut the backer board with um, looks like this. If you don't know what it looks like, this is a scoring knife. And it says uh, backboard or cement board. So it tells you that that's what it's for. Um, I didn't know exactly what knife to use for the cement tape. So I just got this one and I got this one told you some of the stuff I got from other people also go to Habitat for Humanity first go there first go there first go there first Habitat for Humanity also has tiles they sell tiles they sell floors they sell they sell a lot of things okay go to Habitat for Humanity first do not go straight to these big box stores okay Try to find as much used stuff as possible that is of good quality. I bought these. I didn't know how many I needed. I tried to ask. The guy also didn't know. The one that you buy at Home Depot was 150 feet. This one is 50 feet. So I bought three of these. Same price. Um, these are used to tape the boards together and you use thin set mortar on top, whatever, or under it. I don't know. Use thin set mortar to connect the pieces, but these hold it together, I guess. I don't know. Um, sponges. These are the sponges I got. That's it. Um, they're used to clean the grout. Um, I went to Floor and Decker. They said get the same grout. I mean, get the same silicone caulk color that you're getting to use on the towels. Do I think that matters? I'm gonna be completely honest, no. I don't I don't think it matters. But you know, I just wanted to look nice first time. Ooh, look at the new shower, it look nice. I just I just got the same color as the grout for the caulk. Comment in the section below if you whatever you think about this. Honestly, comment in the section below whatever you think about any of this. Because this was all advice and research online. So it's not experience, <laughs> okay? But if you have experience, I am always open to other people's opinions and other people's expertise and other people's knowledge. So there you go. Um, let's see. And I'll, I'll also put everything in the description below. This is a rubber mallet and this is the chipping tool. Again, some of this stuff is borrowed. My husband actually bought this. <laughs> I don't know why. I think we try to use it for trees. As you can see, it's not as sharp. But okay, whatever. Uh, you just use this to get some of the, the tile up. The old tile. So demolition. 
Um, about this spiral thing, this is another thing that they didn't tell us. This is a smaller one. It's for universal use, but it's for small projects. It's not a commercial one. And then there's a big one that's for a commercial one. When I look at these videos, I see everybody using a big one and not the small one. Um, and this power drill is just a power drill that I already had around the house because I'm lazy and I don't like screwing things by hand. But there are some things that you would need to hand screw. This is used if you don't have to hand screw anything, such as furniture or something like that. Like if you don't have to... I use, I use a hand screw to install furniture. I don't use a hand screw to install screws into the wall. Um, and it also depends on the project. If they say don't use a power drill, when I look at the instructions, I just don't use it. So I got the small one. We're gonna see how it works. Um, everybody's using the big one in the videos. Um, this is a small project. Um, I'm not buying a power, a big power tool just for a spiral mixer. I'm also not rinsing it. So I'm gonna do it with this small one and we're going to see how it goes because a lot of people already have a power drill but if you don't buy one i'm telling you it's worth the investment i'm telling you it's worth the investment it'll save you a lot of time and i am not sponsored by black and decker um so you can get whatever brand you want <laughs> they don't pay me um so i got a measuring tape just in case but i also bought a laser leveler so I'm going to measure, but I'm also going to use a laser leveler to make sure that my towel is even. Um, I bought this mask. My dad told me to get it, especially if you're putting on the red guard. Um, supposedly, um, on the Lowe's video, I'll attach it to the description below. They say that you don't need two barriers, two water barriers. You don't need two waterproofing barriers. Um, if you have one behind the walls, you don't need one in front of the walls um, because you can trap water in between those two barriers and it could be a, a disaster. But the ex exception is if your wall is on a um, out, outer wall, like, an, like on the uh, exterior wall, if your wall is connected to the exterior wall, that is the exception. I do have a wall that's connected to the exterior wall. So this wall and this wall is connected to the exterior wall. I'm gonna do the membrane on all four because I just don't give a damn and I don't wanna make it complicated. And I hope damn is not a curse word to you. God damn us all. All right. Um, I also got some goggles because I don't want shards and shit in my face. I mean, sorry. I don't want shards and stuff in my face when I'm doing this. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a potty mouth. <laughs> sorry. Um, I also put this to mark off my towel just in case I got to make any circle cuts because I do have, you know, uh, knobs and stuff like that. I also bought these gloves. I spent a nice pretty penny for them, but I regret it. This is why I say go to Habitat and Humanity first. Um, also just look around. You don't have to spend top dollar for this stuff. These were $20. I will never do that again. And of course, I can't take them back because I bought them a long time ago because I've been preparing for this project for a long time. That's another thing. Do not wait until the day before you're doing the project to actually go get the stuff for the project. Do it within a period of time. Get the stuff within a period of time. That way, it doesn't seem like you're spending a whole lot of money all at once. You can take your time to look for the products at the best prices that you can look for them. And you can get what you really want because... I was going to first get like a regular marble towel, but I just didn't like that. First, I was going to do Subway. I felt like at some point, this is a, that's a trend. And at some point, that's going to expire. Um, and it just doesn't seem like my style. I mean, honestly, it just doesn't seem like my style. And then I was thinking, well, let me just do the marble look, the stone looking, you know, regular towels, rectangle towels, you know, the big ones and just put them back there. You know, that way it's neutral. It looks nice. And I don't have the, you know, but I'm like... Hell no, I'm going to be here for a little while. I might as well get comfortable and get something that I really like. So, of course, I went Pinterest shopping, okay? And I was looking all through pictures through Pinterest, and I thought, why not get this type of towel? Let me show you. This is an 11 by 13. The size of the towel does matter. I got this. 
I got a gray and I got a white. Don't ask me what I'm about to do <laughs> with this towel. That's why you can't see the reveal of the bathroom until I'm finished. If you want to skip ahead and look at it, <laughs> you can. Because based on my understanding, the average amount of time that people watch my videos are like five minutes. So I really wouldn't care. <laughs> but you can look at it if you forward to the end, if you want to. But if you want to see how I'm doing this, then you would look at the whole thing. This is what the back of the tile looks like. I don't know why there's a piece of glue here. But yeah, this is what the back of the tile looks like. Um, I, don't, I forgot the name of it, but it's called like a Desi. Um, this one is Monticello Arena Bianco. And then the gray and the white is a Desi, a Desi Opal Gray and a Desi Opal White. Just in case you want to know exactly what I got and where I got it from, Florinica. Um, this is 11 by 13. And of course you have to do a dry fitting on the wall prior to putting this on just to know how to do it, where so it looks nice. Because the downstairs in my bathroom, I can tell that people just threw this together and just did what they thought was best or hired the cheapest person that they can hire to do this job. Because it just looks like someone just said, just forget it. We're just gonna throw it together and sell it. And as long as it looks nice, it's fine. And come on guys, this is not the first time you've actually been through this, even if you're in a newly renovated house. You look at something you're like, what, 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 what's going on here? That's what I'm talking about. Um, especially if you spent a lot of money for your house and you think you're going to walk into something just nice and luxurious and lo and behold, this is a piece of trash <laughs> with paper thin walls. Um, so yeah, that's all the stuff that I have. Um, so let's get started.